The murder of Billy Joe Jenkins. Over two decades have passed now since the nation were rocked by the brutal murder of the 13-year-old Billy Joe Jenkins. And since then, theories have abounded and the nation's still very much divided when it comes to who they believe killed her. Billy Joe Jenkins had a troubled upbringing and at the age of just nine, she was fostered by Sean and Louis Jenkins, who had four daughters of their own, Esther, Maya, Lottie and Annie. And she lived with the family in London and truly became an integral part of their lives. The family moved to a three-storey Victorian house on Lower Park Road in Hastings, East Sussex. And Billy Jo stayed in contact with her birth parents. She was a student at Helenswood Comprehensive School, where she was known to be well liked and a hard working student. Billy Jo was a young lady in the old fashioned sense of the word. It was rare to meet a young girl with such manners, fondly recalled one of her neighbours. And the 15th of February started out like any regular day for the Jenkins family. Loire, Esther and Maya, they were out shopping for the day, while Sean, Lottie and Annie went to a local DIY store. And Billy Joe opted to stay home alone and paint the patio doors. When Sean and the girls returned home, they discovered the lifeless body of Billy Joe in the back garden. She was surrounded in a puddle of her own blood, with a paint put on a brush to her side. She'd been beaten to death with an 18 inch iron tent peg, which were found near her body. And the attack had been a brutal frenzied one using a tent peg that had come from the tool shed at the bottom of the garden. Billy Joe sustained severe head injuries. She hadn't been sexually assaulted ruling out a sexual motivation. There was also no evidence that anybody had broken into the family home. The police were immediately alerted to the crime scene. The murder inquiry was led by Detective Superintendent Jeremy Payne. And he said, the awful scene that confronted Mr. Jenkins and his daughters is almost unimaginable. Police quickly announced that they were looking for a scar-faced man who was said to be lurking in the area, asking for accommodation shortly before Billy Joe were murdered. He was described as a white man, standing around 5 foot 10 inches tall with wispy fair hair, and he was carrying a Safeway plastic bag with a stick of French bread. Sean also informed police that the family had been plagued by an unknown prowl in the preceding months. He said around two weeks before Jill and Billy Joe were murdered, he'd disturbed a man in the back garden. And a couple of weeks before that, he'd spotted a man staring at the family home from Alexandra Park, directly opposite the house. Just the year beforehand, over a thousand concerned locals had signed a petition calling for better security at Alexander Park after there had been reports of drug dealing and men exposing themselves. The Jenkins family had been so spooked by this anonymous man as well as the fact that the side gate were discovered open on several occasions they had installed security lighting. Billy Jo herself had even complained that she believed she was being followed by somebody since around Christmas time. She'd described the man who'd been following her in extensive detail to her friends, who were a white man, estimated to be in his 40s or 50s, and always wore a leather jacket. The description of the man matched the description Sean gave to the man he'd been seen staring intently at the family's home from Alexander Park. Around two years prior, Billy Jo had also raised concerns that she were being stalked. Police were informed of her claims and Helenswood Secondary School were also made aware. In addition, she'd received a number of strange phone calls wherein the person on the other end of the line hung up 
before speaking. Detective Superintendent Jeremy Payne stated, she had told her parents and friends she felt she was being followed and had spotted a man on some occasions. It appears that she felt this man was paying particular attention to her for some reason. And Hastings were once a quaint holiday resort, but over the years it became run down. Hotels and bed and breakfasts were left abandoned and flats for patients released under the care of the community scheme, they began to pop up. Some neighbours of the Jenkins family said there'd been a spate of robberies as well as vandalism in the area. In fact, the house next door to the Jenkins home was derelict and boarded up. Police announced that they were working on the theory that Billy Joe's killer had been hiding inside the abandoned house next door before he unleashed his attack when he knew that Billy Joe was alone. Sean and Louis would appear on national television to appeal for help in finding the killer of their daughter. Louis could barely contain her emotion as Sean read from a prepared statement. As a family, we're totally devastated. We do not understand why or what the motive was, but we're working closely with police in the hope that the killer will be found and that we can eventually piece our lives back together over the coming years. Billy Jo was loving, she was supportive of her four sisters, she was also buoyant, articulate, quick to learn, she was loud and she was fun loving. And as parents, our sadness drives us to closely work with the police to find a killer. We therefore appeal to anyone who thinks of any information about this crime to contact the police. And just days after the murder, a 44 year old man was arrested in connection. The man who'd been arrested had a large birthmark on his face and was said to be the same man who'd been spotted in the area asking about accommodation shortly before Billy Joe was attacked. However, shortly thereafter, the man would be released from police custody into secure psychiatric care and ruled out as a suspect. A couple of days later, a second man was arrested in connection with Billy Joe's murder, but the following day, he too was released from police custody. And on the 24th of February, there was an unexpected twist in the case, it was announced that Sean had been arrested in relation to Billy Joe's murder. Sean strongly denied that he was involved in his daughter's murder, but three weeks later he was charged with her murder. He was additionally charged with dishonestly obtaining a pecuniary advantage. An investigation into his background had uncovered that he'd falsely represented his educational qualifications and teaching experience to secure his job as deputy head of William Parker School. He would be ordered to stand trial at Loose Crown Court in June of 1998. During the trial, the prosecution suggested that Sharm had beaten Billy Joe to death after a day of frustrating, irritating events, but said that the true motivation may never be known. Camden Pratt QC said that after killing Billy Joe, Sean had then gone to a local DIY store with his two daughters in an attempt to distance himself from the murder before pretending to find Billy Joe's body when he returned home. The case against Sean was built on 139 small blood spots which were found on his clothing. According to the prosecution, the blood resulted from an impact spatter which had come from Sean hitting Billy Joe with the iron tent peg. According to the defence, however, the blood had come from air being released from Billy Joe's lungs as Sean moved her after finding her body in the garden. The defence would present an experiment to try and show that Sean could have sprayed Billy Joe's blood. The prosecution would call Dr Ian Hill to encounter this experiment and according to the pathologist, their experiment was quite unrealistic because the amount of air they had used 
was much greater than for a normal adult breath. Sean Jenkins would be found guilty of the murder of Billy Joe Jenkins and sentenced to life in prison. In 1999, Sean appealed his conviction, claiming the forensic evidence in the case was inaccurate and that the verdict should be squashed. He would lose the appeal, but in May of 2003, after a two-year investigation headed by the Criminal Cases Review Commission, the case was transferred back to the Court of Appeal. The Criminal Cases Review Commission noted the jury did not hear from Sean's other daughters who corroborated his story. During the original trial, police had been told by Louis, who by this point had divorced Sean. What their four daughters had changed, their original stories, which backed up their father's denial of murder. While at the 2003 appeal, Annie and Charlotte's testimony supported the defence's case that their father would not have had time to commit the murder. During the retrial, the forensic evidence from the first trial was scrutinised. Forensic experts testified that the blood found on Sean's clothing could have gotten there as he comforted Billy Jo during her dying moments. The basis of Dr Ian Hill's opinion had come from the fact that there was only a blockage in Billy Joe's lower airway. However, it's since been discovered that the blockage was in fact in her upper airway. And after a three month retrial, the jury was unable to reach a verdict. A second retrial was called and in February of 2006, they too were unable to reach a verdict. Sean Jenkins was declared in consequence not guilty and the Crown Prosecution Service would subsequently formally acquit him of the murder. Over the years, many people have called for the murder case to be reopened, especially considering the advancements of DNA technology. And while the case remains unsolved, Sussex Police have said that if any new information may arise, it would be assessed and investigated if necessary.